Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Diane here. Today I'm going to do um, a, a kind of abstract, semi-abstract, autumn leaf and berries scene. Um, and I'm going to use my Kuretake set of uh, paints, which are kind of halfway between watercolour and gouache, because I'm going to be painting this on a sheet of um, paper, which is actually intended for pastels. It's uh, made by Fabriano. It's called Tiziano. And um, I'm, I, I'll put a link in the uh, description below. But this is the pad the way it looks. Uh, this is mine from some years ago. They've changed the pad now, but this is the name of it. And um, I don't think it's changed at all. Uh, it's 40% cotton and it's um, 160 grams. So it's thinner than ordinary watercolor paper. And they don't actually recommend you use it for watercolor, but they do recommend you use it for gouache. So um, this watercolor is like gouache in some ways. So I'm going to give it a go. And um, what I'm going to do first of all is I've decided on my colors and what I'm going to do is transfer because of the way I paint, I can't keep on dipping into the, the little pans here. This one's starting to get worn out. I'm using a lot of this. This is cadmium orange and I quite like that for autumn. So we're using that. And then the other one that I'm going to put with that is um, maroon. This is a, a sort of rich reddish brown kind of color. So we're going to use that and we'll, we'll mix those two together somewhat. Um, then I'm going to be using also, um, I could either use this Indian red or burnt sienna, but I'm going to go for burnt sienna simply because I'm more familiar with how burnt sienna works and it's a bit less opaque than Indian red, which is, I don't know whether that's actually going to be beneficial on this kind of paper, which has got a color on it or not, but we'll see. Um, the other day I did, I've done two paintings um, on colored toned backgrounds that I created using a, um, a wash. Um, and then it suddenly occurred to me that we, we could we could um, use coloured paper rather than preparing a background. Um, so this is one way of sort of short circuiting that process. Uh, so then I'm going to use some of this really nice blue grey deep. And we'll use that. Um, use some of that. I might even mix some up in advance. Some of the blue grey deep mixed with um, some of that red colour, which I think was this one, wasn't it? Which gives us a very um, grey purple colour. And those are the colours I'm going to use for this painting. So now I can move these out of the way for a minute. <coughs> we will be using the Kiritaki Golds for embellishment, plus um, a white Signo pen, possibly the gold and silver versions of that too. So I was doing that preparation work with a size 11 round brush, <coughs> but I'm going to swap now to a smaller one. This is a seven draw well brushes, links in the description below. Um, I did this one earlier, this isn't finished, I did this as my background. I'm going to be embellishing on top of that um, to try it out because obviously I'm not going to do something for you without trying it out first of all. So this is roughly where we're aiming for. So I'm going to put that to one side. I do this often as you know. 
And that's my guide for going ahead and doing, doing this painting now. So I need my little piece of um, sponge. This is a Spontex dish washing sponge, which I cut in half and I use for just dabbing the excess paint off of my brush. So I'm gonna give this a quarter of an hour because then I have to go and start getting dinner ready. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So I want to drop in a few leaves on a stem, which is going to come across like that. And we'll just very loosely come into the, come into the paper, starting with the point at the top, the end of the leaf. And it doesn't matter what shape your leaves are, they can be any shape. And then dropping in a bit of raw sienna, sort of randomly. And once that starts to dry a little bit, then you can drop a bit more in and you'll, with, your, with a bit of luck, you'll get a nice background and a bit more interesting. <clears throat> that one's quite dark, that's okay though. Don't mind that, let that spread. Okay, so that's our first First twig. And then I'm going to put another one over here. Lovely colour and looks even better um, <clears throat> on this uh, golden coloured paper. Okay, so that's the first ones and uh, we'll be putting a bit more of the yellow in afterwards. But the next thing I think is I'm going to pick up some um, blue and uh, I might just make that a little bit stronger because I just want to do the uh, a twig in, in strong contrast. So strong contrast. And then we'll just do some leaves, same kind of thing. It's nice, uh, soft blue. I like this blue a lot. So we just keep going up here, just randomly, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where you put the leaves, doesn't matter what shape they are, because this is just a, 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 a pattern. And it's, it's very liberating if you think of it as just a pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to put one twig in down here. And this one is going to be in mauve. I'll just make that a little bit lighter. So absolutely no problem whatsoever with the paper. It's working perfectly fine, taking the, the paint perfectly fine, even though it doesn't claim 
to be suitable. And it really doesn't claim that. They say um, you can use it. I'm going to put a, a nice uh, thin, quite dark. Let's find some more of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, gouache, acrylic, pastel, obviously. But clearly it works fine for watercolour too. Let's put some circles in up here. So pretend we've got some berries. Um, maybe we put some down here too. <clears throat> I'm not going to exactly reproduce, reproduce um, the painting I did earlier. There are some things I didn't really like about it. Like I think I made the berries a bit big, but um, that doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't have some large motifs. And quite dark too. We want some really quite dark leaves so that we can put a nice lot of uh, embellishment on top of them. I have a big one down here. And um, let's put a line up here. I'm going to go back to the pinks and if we put some pink leaves in, probably want to knock that down a bit with a bit of blue so it's not too not too um, lipsticky. And now I'm just kind of filling in some spaces and we'll just let rip really, just kind of do whatever. And we have some golden berries down here perhaps. And maybe a bit more burnt sienna in these leaves. Like I said, they uh, they have a background a bit, which is good. That's what we wanted. Got a little bit of this red here, so we'll just mix that in with the brown to give us a kind of reddish tone because every painting ought to have some red in it somewhere, really. Probably it's worth 
coming into the dark ones, or some, some of them anyway, when they are dry. And you can just put a, um, most of them aren't dry enough yet, but um, a vein down the middle just using the brush, which somehow really sort of picks the whole thing up. But that's nowhere near, we're nowhere near finished yet. Put some some more blue berries up here. <clears throat> and I think yeah, we probably ought to have a couple of dark, really dark leaves sort of in the background. And they don't even need to be really leaf shapes. Just shapes. And they don't need to join on to anything, they just need to be there. And when they're dry, if you want, you can come in with a smaller brush and um, put some stems in to link them with some of the twiggy bits. Okay, so I said I'd give myself a quarter of an hour. I think a quarter of an hour is about up. Just darken these. Lines a little bit, we can do more in the way of strengthening those shapes that go across. Oops. Okay. Right then, we'll let that dry and I'll be back in a tick. So this is dry now and I'm just going to start adding a few more darks in here. And I'm going back to the colours I've already mixed and I'm going to drop in some strokes of darker colour at the bottom half of some of these leaves, not going over the whole thing, but just at the bottom half to give them a little bit more interest. And then when we come to do the embellishment, um, we'll have a darker colour to, to work with. So that should be quite nice. I'm not doing it to all of them, just some. And I'm using this dark bluish purple here on the ones which are uh, bluish purple already, but they're somewhat lighter. And then I'll switch to the dark blue, which um, is a mixture also of two colours. You'll remember that from the beginning. And we're going to put in some strokes like that. They're just nice strokes, they're nice to do and uh, they add quite a lot of depth to the painting. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you feel you're happy with the leaves the way they are, that's also fine. But um, yeah, so also while I've got the darker colour on my um, brush, I'll find all the blue leaves that don't yet have central veins or have nothing attaching them to the universe. And uh, we'll just pop those in and then perhaps we'll switch back to the lighter, the lighter mauve for some of these ones. And uh, while you're doing this, you'll be thinking, of course, what am I going to do in the way of embellishment? How am I going to do this? So let's not forget these ones. This is, uh, I think I want to make that darker. So let me see, I'm going to mix it with some, some of that grey, make it into a really dark chocolate brown. So that blue mixed with that colour there is going to give us a chocolate brown colour like that. It's 
It's a nice brown. It's um, it's not necessary to go hunting in your palette for, um, you know, burnt umber or something like that. You've got your burnt sienna and you've got your dark navy blue and uh, Bob's your uncle. Now you might think that that looks too dark, but it doesn't because when we come to put the gold and everything else on, it will probably, hopefully anyway, uh, look okay. But if it doesn't look okay, then it doesn't matter because we had fun, right? Okay, so that's that. Um, now, I think yesterday I woke up my gold and silver starry colours. I did, I woke them up. Um, but then I didn't, and then I fell asleep. I didn't get round, come on, I didn't get round to... Uh, I think I need a new spritzer bottle because this one is so annoying. It looks so professional, it's all silver and all the rest of it, but it's absolutely hopeless. The only thing it's good for is giving me exercise on the hand. And you know what, I don't need that. Anyway, so yeah, it doesn't take much to get these organized into a painting mode. Just have to put a bit of water on and give them a bit of a stir up. And um, before you know where you are, they're ready to roll. And the question is only, you know, what am I going to do with it? And at the moment, I don't know. So, um, yeah, I think the slightly silverier one goes better, probably. Let's not get it on my, let's not put my hand on it, with the bluish. So we'll just be brave. It's only a piece of paper. And in general, you will find that whatever you do makes it look better. This is something I have recently discovered. So we'll just paint in the center vein and some uh, some side veins and this one is asking me for blobs because it's already got its veins in so it says blob me please blob me tender this one wants blobs too and these ones are going to be much enhanced by um, layers, layers, that's the word, layers of colour. And if you use it nice and thick, not only will you make Kurataki happy because you'll need a new set before very long, but also it will be completely opaque and will go over even the darkest of your paints. So right over the, gold, the brown, the gold goes. Okay, um, a few more blobs on this one. Looks like it wants blobs. And we've got these nice um, big circles up here. So we put Okay, we've got more over here. We need some gold on these ones. Uh, 
and we'll do some blobs. And some of them might want a nice stroke. Doesn't everybody? So we'll just maybe sort of make make it half metallic. And you can straighten out some of your um, shapes if they're a bit, if you think they're a bit rough. So just paint the bits that are irregular in gold and pretend that's what you intended all along, which of course it was. In a minute, I'm going to move from the brush to a pen. I think this was a slight mistake. It didn't quite work out, so I'm going to paint over that. The wonderful thing about using gouache is that you can correct what you did wrong or that you didn't like after you'd finished, which happens sometimes. Okay, so I think I'll stop with that there and then get myself a pen. And, you know, I like to go with the flow and if the thought occurs to me all of a sudden, oh, you know what, you know what you need. You want to get your dip pen and do some scratchy, scratchy work on here. So I'll do that. I didn't have that in mind in the beginning, but you know. So I've got my dip pen here. It's just a cheap one. It's just plastic, has a dip nib. And uh, you can check that out on my um, Amazon shop. And I'm going to... Probably, I don't know, I'm just going to, to draw, see what happens. Go around some of these. There's something quite satisfying about using a dip pen because it will give you, if you turn it to the side slightly, it will give you a much thicker um, line. And if you keep it vertical, more straight, like you would do if you were writing, you get a nice narrow line and it will carry on working for ages. It does pick up and hold quite a lot of paint, uh, ink. And again, you can straighten out some of your shapes. And, you know, you've got a bunch of berries here and you don't necessarily want them to be super regular, but you can add the little um, point where it was attached, <laughs> flower was attached, because the berry kind of comes behind, doesn't it, behind the flower. So you can add that little point which makes them really look more like berries. Do that. Makes you think of holly, doesn't it? And then you can work into the, the gold a bit too. 
This is an, a Sennelier watercolour ink in uh, walnut. You definitely don't want to go over all the lines. You don't want to redraw all the leaves. Maybe just the ones you want to stand out in the front. Having the outline around the leaf um, draws the eye to it more, so it makes it the sort of star of the scene. And if you've got any that you don't like the colour of or you don't like the shape of, then you wouldn't go around those ones. You just leave those ones to drift into the background. I think it's a good idea to use the pen to give them the pointed shape that most leaves have. They, if they're not round, then most of them have a kind of pointy end, don't they? And we've got some more berries here, so we'll just give them a bit of And, you know, you can carry on doing this as much as you want or as little and sort of stop when you get to the point where you think, oh, I think I've done enough. I'm going to stop now, but I'm not going to necessarily finish here, but I have just realised what the time is and I need to go and feed the dogs. So I'll be back quicker than you can, quicker than, quicker than a, quicker than a what? Shake of a lamb's tail. See you in a minute. So a little bit more ink work here needed, I think, to balance this off. And uh, to give lots of contrast, one of, the <clears throat> one of the things that people tend to be attracted to in a design is elements of contrast. So um, lots of light and dark and uh, contrasty colours like, say, the orange, and the complement of that is, of course, purple. <coughs> and you've got plenty of that going on here with these contrasty colours. And uh, all on top of this um, sort of banana shake coloured paper gives you um, a nice warm autumnal sort of effect. And I'm just... Um, I'm just going to outline these berries up here, the ones that were not originally berries. They were supposed to be a sort of seed head, but it kind of went wrong. So we'll forget all about that and we'll just put these berry 
um, shapes in. And I might add a little bit of colour to that as well, because as you go along, you're going to you know, notice that, you know, something might need shutting up like that dog. That's Will, Will, William. William. William died a long time ago. That's Liam. Um, okay, so we've got circular ones here. Gonna have um, oh dabs of dabs of dabs of gold. A few more dabs of gold. Dabs of gold on this circular one. The more um, embellishments that you put on, the more gold and the more dots and the more um, interesting shapes and so on that you add, the more it will look like a tapestry or an embellishment, embellished pa painting, so to speak. So um, I'm just putting in a bit more gold here and then I'll come in. I think now is getting to be the time to come in with the pen, the gold pen and perhaps the white pen. Okay, so let's see. You can put some nice gold circles, dots, like beads. And the darker the paint where you put them, of course, the better they're going to stand up, out, up. <laughs> Poor old Ruby. <laughs> and I've got a few little sort of squinky things up there. So we might do few more sort of squinky things. Nice circles on there, and there's a few more here. <clears throat> yeah, and I think the thing with painting like this is to make sure that you leave plenty of background, and although you're going to put lots of embellishments. You don't want to cover up all the lights and everything. So you're going to keep <coughs> keep your um, design on a nice light background. <coughs> With really good contrasting lights and darks. That's the key. Okay. I think that'll do. I think that's good enough. I think that'll have to, that'll be enough for one day. And it, you could take it further. You could keep going. You could come back into it and do some spatter. Um, but I think I've had my allotted 35 minutes for this video. So I'm going to let you go. Take this idea, make it yours, share it on Facebook. And uh, yeah, basically have fun. And I'll see you again soon, everybody. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.